Here's a riddle for you. What do microwaves, x-rays, and rainbows all have in common? Come on, you know this. Come on, here's some hints. That's exactly right. Electromagnetic waves. There are all kinds of electromagnetic waves, just with different frequencies. You just went, huh? No worries, you're not in the minority. Electromagnetic waves. You'll probably recognize them a little easier on the electromagnetic spectrum. It's an image most people have seen in a science class at some point. So electromagnetic waves are something that we've probably heard of before, but we've never really thought about in detail. So let's think about it. What exactly is an electromagnetic wave? How do we know about them and why are they important to you and me? The discovery of electromagnetic waves is largely attributed to scientist James Clark Maxwell, a physicist from Scotland. Michael Faraday, born in the century before him, had already concluded that changing magnetic fields induce electromotive forces, which produce a current. This observation would be essential for Maxwell's discoveries. Maxwell also noted the work of scientists like Oersted, Gauss, and Coulomb, who noted many similarities between electric fields and magnetic fields. Maxwell was able to combine these ideas and observations together to make some important conclusions, summarize them into equations, and predict the existence of electromagnetic waves. Mathematically, these equations are pretty difficult to grasp. They're not even in the OpenStack textbook. These are difficult. Like, seriously. So, let's break them down a bit in a way that's easier to understand. Tacky cartoons. Rule number one. Electric field lines travel from positive charges to negative one. You can see here an AC current. Positive on one side, negative on the other. Um, and you can probably guess where the electric field lines are going to come through. Exactly. Starting at the positive, going down to the negative. The strength of the force of the electric field on a charge is related to epsilon sub naught, or the permittivity of free space. That sounds scary, but it's just a constant. You don't even have to calculate it. It's right here. I promise you that will come in handy for solving equations later on. The second conclusion Maxwell drew was about magnetic fields and how they're continuous. Think about it. Magnets have a north and south end. You could try and cut one of those ends off, but doing so will only create more magnets. Think gremlins or hydras. There are no magnetic monopoles. And similar to electric fields, the strength of a magnetic field also relates to a constant, but this time the permeability of free space. See why scientists have noticed some similarities between the two field types? It's a really good thing that Maxwell was able to make these assumptions and draw some important conclusions. His third and fourth conclusions we've already talked about a bit. Remember when Faraday noticed that changing magnetic fields cause a change in EMF and then a current? Maxwell noticed that too, but he hypothesized that the reverse was also true, that magnetic fields could be induced by changing electric fields. He was exactly right. As you can probably guess, this creates a cycle and together they propagate a wave. What kind of wave you ask? I bet you could guess, an electromagnetic wave. And understanding how that happens isn't as bad as it sounds. You're actually right about to do it. Let's say you have a wire with a current running through it, but let's make it an AC current so that way the currents are constantly changing directions. Since we know that the electric field is going to travel from positive charges to negative ones, changing the current will also change the direction that our electric field is traveling in. You can see how the arrows are going up, then down. Not too confusing. If you start to look at these changes side by side, you are going to notice that it starts to create an image. Focus only on the dots of the, on the tips of the arrows in the bottom row and play connect the dots to trace them tip to tip. You start to see something? I sure hope so. Let's make it a bit more clear. Can you see it now? It creates a wave, see that? A wave, traveling away from the source. Let's consider now this same wave, but take the arrows out. Let's apply the rest of Maxwell's equations. We know that these changing electric fields are going to cause changing magnetic fields. The ma magnetic field lines are going to come in perpendicular to the electric field wave. So that's it drawn in blue. Remember that it comes in at 90 degrees, so imagine that this wave is coming in and out of the page, away from you and towards you again. When you assess these two things together, you get an electromagnetic wave. This is how Maxwell was able to use mathematics and observation to discover something really important about the world around us. Electromagnetic waves bring us popcorn, x-rays, and even color. 
But here's a key thing to know about electromagnetic waves. They're moving in a direction away from a source, so that means they're traveling at some velocity v. And what would that velocity be? I'll give you a hint. Let's pull an equation that became really important to Maxwell, which has those constants I promised you would come up again. Let's take c equals 1 divided by the square root of mu sub naught times epsilon sub naught. Remember, that's just the permeability and the permittivity of free space constants, putting them in. By the time we finish simplifying that down and plugging in the constants, we get a value of 2.997 and some change meters per second, which, if you'll notice, rounds to 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That's a number you'll probably recognize, the speed of light in a vacuum. That's exactly right. Electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light, which means that light is a type of electromagnetic wave, which probably makes the connection between this image and electromagnetic waves make a lot more sense. Visible light falls into the electromagnetic spectrum along with UV rays, gamma rays, X-rays, radio waves, and all that exciting stuff from before. All types of electromagnetic waves, just with different frequencies. I sure hope you're feeling proud of yourself for getting all this. It took a bunch of physicists countless years. So now that we have a pretty solid conceptual understanding of electromagnetic waves, let's take a look at a mathematics application problem. So this is from the OpenStax Physics textbook 2013. It's cited at the end. And it says that the maximum magnetic field strength of an electromagnetic field is 5 times 10 to the negative 6 teslas. Calculate the maximum electric field strength if the wave is traveling in a medium in which the speed of the wave is 0.75c. Don't get thrown off by that 0.75c. All that it's saying is that um, since we're not going through a vacuum, we're going to be some percentage slower than the normal speed of light, which in this case is 0.75. And so recall that electromagnetic waves have both electric and magnetic properties. You can see on the right my poorly drawn sketch, I'm trying to represent both of those. So when we analyze the two together, we can relate them with interesting equations like this one. E sub naught equals B sub naught times C. E representing the electric properties and B being the magnetic, uh, the magnetic field. Or more specifically in this case, E sub naught being the maximum electric field strength and B sub naught being the maximum magnetic field strength. C, of course, will be the speed of light, and we're going to throw in that 0.75 because that is um, the modification for the real world application. So we're given um, that the maximum magnetic field strength is 5 times 10 to the negative 6 Teslas. We know that the constant for C is 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and so we can plug that in. Now, don't be confused. I'm not trying to trick you or anything like that. Teslas are just equal to volts um, times second per meter squared. And I wanted to write it out um, in that form so that we can understand what's going on with our units. So you can see on the right, to prove I'm not lying to you, that it's volt times second times meters divided by second times meter squared, which simplifies to volts per meter, which is exactly what we want for electromagnetic fields. So if you're still not sure if you think electromagnetic waves are interesting yet, here's my personal favorite thing about them. Many waves, like sound, need some sort of medium in order to be able to travel. Ripples go through water, sound goes through air, you get the idea. But electromagnetic waves don't. They can travel without a medium. So why is that such a cool thing for you and me? Think of the last time you listened to the radio. This cartoon certainly won't capture you, and it's easily the ugliest convertible I've ever seen, but it's just stick with me. That radio worked because the sound waves playing at the radio station were converted to electromagnetic waves. They were able to travel to you, where your speaker converted it back into a sound wave, which you got to hear and jam out to. All in all, between help of physics problems, hot pockets, and radio stations, I sure am happy that electromagnetic waves exist. And I hope that after watching this video, you are too. Thank you so much for watching.